In this video, we'll be trying the Vito Man Jump 1500X. And most importantly, I'm gonna put the Jump 1500X to the test and I'm gonna give it some random fixed tool grade so you guys can go ahead and decide for yourself. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix and welcome to Texas. It has been raining for about 12 days consecutively and we were without power for about two days. So in this video, I will be testing the Vito Man Jump 1500X that has 828 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate power. And the Vito Man has some surprising features that I have not found on other portable power stations. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's included really quick. So the unit came nicely packaged in this box right here. And again, I have been using this for the last two weeks around the house as we constantly have power outages. Now let's take a look at what's included in the box. You get the power brick, and the power brick here is rated at 180 watts. This is standard laptop computer cable on the other end. Barrel style connectors will go right into the input. And I can also power it off the car cable, which I will go ahead and try out later. It also came with some stickers, this carrying case for all the accessories, USB-C to USB-C charging cable, USB-C to regular USB cable and a user's manual and some friendly tips. Here are some product highlights on the side of the box. We got 828 watt hours power. These are going to be the LiFePo 4 batteries. These are the really safe batteries that last a very long time and are less likely to catch fire or explode. There's going to be the DC input. So I can purchase solar panels that have a voltage range of this and I'll be okay. And I can charge the unit with up to 200 watts. The unit has an AC output of 1500 watts with a peak wattage of 3000. And we have some USB-A and USB-C outputs that are rated at five amps and different wattages, operating temperature. And one thing I do wanna note about this unit here is that this is heavy. I can normally lift power stations with one hand and this weighs over 30 pounds and it is not the most portable unit I have tested. However, that is actually a good thing because there's going to be a lot of technology and that weight means it's got a lot of good stable batteries in there, which we'll go ahead and talk about. And as the rain continues, let's take a look at the display and some things that we can actually power off this unit. The unit has this nice display. It does not have any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth applications I can go ahead and download, but that's okay because this is not advertised to go ahead and do that. We have inputs right here of 12 volts to 30 volts, which can be used by the charging brick or solar panels. USB-C output, which I can turn on with this button right here. And all these are now turned on. So two of those. Then I have a quick charge port down here and three regular outputs right here. This also has a car lighter port, which is normally rated at 10 amps and two barrel style connectors, which I can go ahead and wire up. And I'll leave links down below for these connectors. And with these connectors, it's gonna allow me the flexibility to run LED lights and all kinds of cool gadgets. Here are the three output ports for the alternating current. They can be turned on with this button right here. And the unit just turned on and the fan did cycle. And it lets me know how many hours this can go ahead and last under its current load. So currently it's consuming four watts. That's because the inverter does take power. These take power. And as a helpful tip, whenever you're using a portable power station, always try to use DC whenever possible, as there's less loss. When I turn that off, the wattage just drop down to zero. And these three plugs are sine wave, so they're gonna be safe to use for laptops and PCs. And if you're gonna use this for a home UPS, which is basically a power supply in case the power goes out, it's gonna switch over automatically. This does not have that feature, but it'll still go ahead and give you the backup power that you want. It just will not do it in milliseconds. One of the coolest features I was excited to go ahead and try out was this jumper port that is built onto 
this unit and this is the very first power station I have seen with the port for jumping your vehicle but the cable was not included so I'll leave you guys a link to the cable where you can go ahead and connect it to here and jump start your vehicle another nice feature of this unit is going to be this optional battery expansion which is on this port right here and if I connect another battery I can go ahead and double the capacity of the watt hours of this unit. I normally don't find expandable units in this price range. Let's go ahead and turn the unit around. And on this side, we have some cooling vents. It does have an LED bar on the back with three different settings. This is the highest. We got a strobe light, an SOS. And if I push it one more time, it'll turn off. And now let me go ahead and use this unit to power up some different devices that I have around the house that do consume a lot of power. So this is my rig that I use for backup power. I connect this to my Prius and I leave it on overnight and it wastes less than $3 of gas. And I'm gonna show you guys a really nice unit. This is the Anchor C800 Plus. And this is an air fryer. And we're going to see some limitations. And then I'm going to show you guys this same exact unit being powered off of the 1500X. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to turn on the air fryer. And this unit read about 1600 watts on here. And it reset. Even though this unit is great, it cannot handle such a big surge. Now let me show you guys the C1000 with the auxiliary battery, which is a much more powerful unit. And we'll try that same test, see what happens. And this unit is able to go ahead and power up the air fryer. And let's see what happens when we go ahead and put it under some additional load. I have a little heater here and I'm gonna turn this on. And at 2,221 watts, the unit shut off. Let's go ahead and try the same on the Jump 1500X and see what happens. And let's see how this handles that load. I'm gonna turn on the AC ports. Let's try the air fryer. Same temperature of 370 degrees Fahrenheit. So the 1500X is able to go ahead and turn on the air fryer no issues. And it did something that's pretty unique uh, for appliances such as this, air fryer, and this could be your coffee makers, maybe an air conditioning unit. It goes and limits the amount of power it supplies to the unit, but it will not trip. So once the unit fully heats up, the water is gonna go ahead and drop. But the most important factor in all of this is the fact that we can actually use the air fryer. Now let's go ahead and turn on this heater. And that heater up top is 1500 watts, 1900 watts. So that's pretty cool. We got the air fryer on, we got the heater on, and the Vito Man Jump 1500X is handling all of this internally and it is not tripping and resetting. And I'm able to actually use this. So this unit makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways for devices that are not computer related with a high power consumption. So in my opinion, the Jump 1500X is very, very unique, and most importantly, it works. However, I think this has a few limitations, and the limitations really come down to high consumption computers. So if you have a computer or a desktop that really consumes over 1,000 watts, I would not run it on this, as this may go ahead and limit the power that it needs, and I think it can actually damage the unit. But for general everyday use for camping and also in your camper vans, this is amazing. I have not seen a unit that can handle this kind of abuse. If we read the screen here, it lets us know some information here that it can go ahead and handle the air fryer and the heater for half an hour. And we got 1200 watts going out here. I'm gonna turn off the DC ports. 
and we can go ahead and charge this as we're using it and currently I am charging it the light is green and if I turn off the AC ports we are charging at 148 watts 178 and now it would take about almost an hour to go ahead and charge up to 100 percent so it doesn't offer some sort of fast charging mechanism and I actually like the slow charging I think it's less dangerous to the batteries and this really does have a lot of power I really do think this is unique now let's try out the car lighter port and plug it into my vehicle with the engine on it's charging at 109 watts and it will take 1.2 hours to fully charge so this is definitely nice for those road trips as I can go ahead and plug the 12 volt refrigerator into here turn on these ports and even when I turn off the car this will continue to get power and I don't have to worry about my food spoiling and that is definitely awesome recently we lost power for more than 24 hours in East Texas and I let my neighbor borrow the jump 1500x and off a single charge he powered off his full-size refrigerator and his personal electronics and for the next power outage I am definitely ready I'm not gonna be without refrigeration internet and lights in the main rooms and it's definitely easy to be ready for the next blackout with small devices such as the jump 1500x if you guys got any questions about this please comment down below and I will try to point you in the right direction so now is my favorite part of the video this is where I'm gonna go ahead and give this a random fix tool grade so you guys can decide for yourself so I really enjoy testing the unit and I want to thank the vendor for sending me this. As always, guys, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my honest review. They don't tell me what to say or what not to say. I just give it to you guys the way I see it. There's a couple of things that I would actually change. One of them is going to be the fact that this does not have USB-C charging. So I can only charge through these ports right here, which is either going to be from solar or from the wall using the provided power brick. They definitely have a lot of room up top. So I'm surprised that this does not feature wireless charging. And because of the weight, this is truly not portable. Again, this definitely weighs a little bit more than the usual sub 1000 watt hour portable power station. And as far as the features that I love, I love the fact that I cannot overload this unit. I know it limits the power and it may be dangerous for big personal computers, but I'm not planning on using it for that. And if I was to go to a portable power station in my camper van this might be the one i would choose because you don't want to go and reset it every time you're going to go make coffee or turn on a device that surges water heaters air fryers microwaves any of these sort of devices always surge so i'm going to go ahead and display for you guys the random fix tool grade which is going to be a 68 out of 100 which is really a good score for something that costs under 500 dollars and if they wanted to improve the score, they could have just gave us the connectors that we needed. This would have made it super, super cool to be able to jumpstart the vehicle and would have put it over the top. Again, really nice power station that packs a big punch and it can handle a load. And I really do like it. And if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. If you guys want to find the special pricing on this unit, please check the video links down below as well as the clickable link at the end of the video. And if there's something that I left off in this video, please let me know what it is so I can incorporate it into a future video. So after editing the video, I realized I did not give it enough credit for what it really does, which is basically it has the ability to soft start. And what Vodoman has done with the Jump 1500X is definitely undervalued, but definitely appreciated when it comes down to on demand power and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash on that like button as well thank you again and make it a great day